though I was oppressed, though I was abused, though I was told that as a woman you don't have a you don't really have voice mm -hmm. and God cannot speak to you. All these things and because of women, sin came into the world. That's what we were told. That was taught from the pulpit mm. where I grew up. Wow. But when I started reading the word of God and saw it with my own eyes, yes. the written word, what God said about me, things started changing. <laughs> God promises in Joel 2.28 to pour out His Spirit on all humanity. Welcome to Global Outpouring, where we contend for that promised outpouring and we equip for that outpouring so that we may engage in that very outpouring. I'm Philip Buss. And I'm Sharon Buss. Welcome to the podcast today. We have with us a dear friend, Reshma Allen, who has been here with her husband teaching us in the School of the Supernatural Translation by Faith. The Lord has brought her in an amazing journey that has given her a unique understanding about the role of women in these days. And we want her to share that with us today. So stay tuned, you're going to enjoy this. Welcome to the podcast today. Before we get started, let me just encourage you to go to our website, globaloutpouring.net, where you can find the, uh, the whole listing of our podcasts for the last so many years and where you can connect with us. There's a place where you can send us feedback. And there's also a, a place that will show you the events that we have that are coming up. And you can shop in our bookstore. You can donate and help us to, to uh, go around the world with these messages. And uh, just take advantage of that opportunity. So, Reshma Allen, we're so delighted to have you with us on the podcast today. Thanks so much for even coming here all the way to our headquarters in Arkansas. Thank you for having us. It's been great being here with you guys. We always enjoy when you come, and, and we're just enjoying uh, getting to know you better. And, you know, I just, I just feel like we have the beginning of an eternal relationship. Yes, I believe so, too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel like um, there's just so much ahead of us. We're, we're eternal beings, and, and what goes on here on this planet is just... Uh, kind of like boot camp for what, <laughs> what, what is yet to come. Yes. So the last time we had you with us, you shared a little bit about your testimony. Um, you came from Indian culture growing up in Fiji. And uh, as a woman, that was difficult. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, it was difficult. Growing up in my home and some of the cultural beliefs and traditions were difficult for me to understand because the way women were treated in everything, the way their lives were dictated. And um, after we received the Lord, it was so exciting because through a miracle, my family was saved. And then we started going to the church and we started learning about Jesus. And it was so awesome and I loved it. Everything about him, how loving, how caring he was, how involved he was in our life, everybody's lives, and how involved he was, especially in women's life. Mm -hmm. That was an amazing thing to discover, you know. He went into their homes. He was concerned about their children. He went and ate with them. He talked with them. And whenever uh, they came to him, they he paid special attention to them. Mm -hmm. He healed them. And then one of the stories that I remember that one woman like Mary Magdalene was so broken and so hurting and in so much pain and she was desperate in her life what was going on and she comes to him and the disciples were not happy because they were saying that doesn't even know what kind of woman she is and the Lord just started ministering to her and he in a way, the way he treated her and ministered her and set her free and welcomed her showed me that he was trying to show the disciples and the leaders of that day how to treat women. Mm -hmm. He was he was being a great example, and that really touched my heart because, you know, the way I was raised, the way women were treated and talked to in home, and their voice didn't mean much, you mm -hmm. know, and then we 
uh, become Christians, we come to church and they're treated the same way. Mm. And oh, you are told yeah. behind the pulpit that God is love, God is this, God is that. But oh. when we went home, oh. there was no love. There was no respect. I didn't feel that or see that. So I started seeing at a young age that um, there was something not right here. Mm -hmm. Because I will read in the Bible the way God treated women was totally different than uh, the way we were treated. So things didn't change, but it really heightened my curiosity about this new God we had received. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And things started changing in my life because I, will, I started reading the Word of God. And I will see the difference between what was done in the home or in the church and the Word of God and what God said. Mm -hmm. So I started believing Him. At a young age, I learned to believe him, what he said about me, mm -hmm. than what other people were saying or treating me. So God did some amazing things in my life. And because of that, and he, he brought me out of difficult, difficult situation and set me free and um, made a way for me where there seemed to be no way yes. in the world. And then... It just this journey started because what he set me free from now, as I travel with my husband around the world, different parts of the world, mm -hmm. and I see women and we meet w women and I can sense, I can see, I can perceive what is going on. And I w I'm able to minister to them and encourage them and, and see a breakthrough in their lives. So it's been a great journey and I'm just so excited everywhere I go. And because of, you know, when we have a testimony mm -hmm. and we share with others, there is breakthrough. Yes. It's true. Yeah. It's true. When, yes. when, when we were talking before we started recording, I was hearing in my spirit the scripture from Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11.34. I have the Amplified here. This is the faith, faith chapter. So it's talking about all these different ones that, that by faith they did this and by faith they did that. And verse 34 says, Extinguish the powers of raging fire. Escaped the devourings of the sword. Out of frailty and weakness won strength and became stalwart, even mighty and resistless in battle, routing alien hosts. I mean, what I heard, of course, in my spirit was how I had learned it all my life, you know, in, in the King James, out of weakness we're made strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So your strength today in the spirit, because you've been delivered from that kind of mindset mm -hmm. and delivered from the, the, the pains that you suffered, uh -huh. it's made you strong so that you can help others to come about right. of this. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember years ago, we had a, uh, a teacher in our school, Dr. June Lewis, who taught about how in these end times, in these, these days uh, leading up to the coming of the Lord, and, and we don't know how many days that is. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it began at the day of Pentecost nearly 2,000 years ago. Uh, but in, in these days that God was going to raise up women yes. because of the need for a nurturing, mothering heart to be brought into the culture that that as he pours out his spirit, it's, there's going to be a lot of women that God is going to use in these days to help grow people up. Because mm -hmm. really, what God is looking for is a mature people, mm -hmm. grown up. And and what what has the role of women been for centuries and generations and generations? But to raise the children into maturity. That's right. And those things have gotten twisted in our, all of our cultures across the earth. There've been mm -hmm. twistings. Because the enemy is trying to keep us from ever accomplishing what God sent man to, to the earth to accomplish. Right. So in these days, it's going to be important for us to be teaching and preaching and uh, helping to grow people up in the spirit. Now, how, what has the Lord been talking to you about in, along those lines? Well, the Lord has been talking to me about that in these last days, God is going to raise up a company of women. Mm -hmm. our army of women from all over the world and he's going to use them mightily because one thing i found out studying the word of god was that if you look at the scriptures from genesis to revelation 
God raised up women mm -hmm. and highlighted their lives mm -hmm. and used them mightily in yes. times of crisis. Mm -hmm. And they are interwoven in the Bible like a beautiful tapestry. They came from all different backgrounds, situations of life, and he just used them mightily. Mm -hmm. And you and through them, major revelation of God and who he is came into the world. Yes. They stood up for their nation. Yes. Nations. They stood up and fought. Look at Deborah. Mm -hmm. She went to the mm -hmm. battlefield. Yes. Because I believe with all of my heart you are talking about nurturing. So children of Israel uh, were uh, in uh, under this uh, evil rule. And they were um, oppressed by this evil king. But God raised the first woman in the Bible as a judge, and they came to her for encouragement. Right. Mm -hmm. And I believe with her, because of her mothering nature, who she was, and uh, she was able to comfort them mm -hmm. and, uh, and nurture them and encourage them in times of desperation, what was happening in their nation. And then the Lord brings this mighty word to her to tell the leader of the army, Barak, to come and fight mm -hmm. because the oppression that the, pe the people crying out to God because they were oppressed, you know, touched his heart. Yes. And yeah. he wanted to see his uh, people set free. But Barak goes to her, I'm not going if you don't go with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it yeah. really shows you the mothering, the caring heart of Deborah mm -hmm. that she wanted to see the people set free just like the Lord did. Yes. And Barak really didn't care, I believe. And he did not have that nurturing nature that Deborah had. Right. And yeah. women have that nurturing nature. Mm -hmm. And she goes to war with him. Right. She puts on a boot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> she treks through the mud. Right. And she goes to the war with him. And he said, if you go, then I will go. And she said, okay. Because... She loved the people of God. She right. loved her mm -hmm. people. She wanted right. to see them set free. And she goes and she tells Barak what to do and they win the battle. Yeah. And, oh. you know, that shows us. And it was a very important time or a time of crisis. And over and over we look at Esther, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. her nation, her people are about to be wiped out. Right. Yeah. And she stands up. Mm -hmm. She stands up. She knows she takes that step going before the king, knowing that she could be killed by the encouragement of her uncle. Mm -hmm. And she says, you know, even if I am killed, I am killed. Right. But I'm yeah. going to go and stand up for my people. And and through her, her people were set free and saved. And the word went out and for, you know, and it, that decree has never been taken back. It's yeah. true. Even mm -hmm. in our day, mm -hmm. it had a ripple effect. So I believe that the Lord is raising up women in this hour. He's going to use them in these last days in a mighty way. Mm -hmm. And he's setting them free. He is bringing them out from that place of unworthiness, abuse, and all the things. And for generations, they have been taught, you know, and told that they cannot be used of God. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I was told growing up, mm -hmm. you know, that women have no place in church. They had no place in church. And, you know, they were always put down. In the first 22 years of my life, I felt like being a woman was a curse. There was nothing good about it yeah. because the way we were treated in home and in the church so I'm just excited to see what God is going to do. So I love to go all over and encourage women to rise up, yes. to yeah. rise up. God mm -hmm. is going to give you a word. God is going to give you a prophetic word, a mm -hmm. vision. Through you, you will see nations set free, people groups set free, their families set free, neighborhood. And, and uh, I'm just so excited because, you know, we are living in a time of crisis. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And women yes. need to rise up. Yeah. Well, we're, you know, I'm thinking about uh, like in war, mm -hmm. when a man is injured, a right. soldier is injured in, right. in, the, in the battle. How many times have I he I've heard stories of, of these grown men crying out for mama? Exactly. Yeah. And, right. and so mama has to arise. And, uh -huh. and there's something that God put in us yeah. of a strength. There's a right. strength in a woman that enables us to take care of our children. Right. Even if we don't have the strength mm -hmm. ourselves, somehow we muster it. And, right. and, and, and in childbirth. 
Right. You know, childbirth is a thing that it takes a strength that men, that God didn't give to men. Right. God gave men a kind of strength mm -hmm. that we need in these mm -hmm. days. This yes. is not about, oh, well, women are going to do it all. No, no, no. Yeah. It's about us coming together, together. Yeah. and giving mm -hmm. our strengths to each other mm -hmm. and working together because there's there's things Philip can do that I can't do. That's right. And, and I need him and he needs me. And we right. do these things together. Mm -hmm. But there's something that God put in women. Mm-hmm. That is a strength to be able to bear a kind of pain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and bear a kind of, I mean, you can't just stop in the middle of a childbirth and say, I think <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do this. I don't want to do this. this. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going home. Right. <laughs> you have to finish what you started. Right. That's yeah. right. <laughs> and, and so there's, a, there's this something that God put in us mm -hmm. physically right. to enable us to do what needs to be done mm -hmm. when he gets in there inside of us. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what it takes in intimacy with the Lord mm -hmm. to empower us. Right. Talk about that. Some time ago, I want to start with this. Uh, I was in a conference and this man was speaking and he said something, and it's not left me. It could be 15, 16 years ago. He said that because women understand childbirth, as mm -hmm. you were talking about birthing, better than anybody else, because naturally they give birth. Mm -hmm. And the Bible talks about in the last days, there, there's going to be a birth pains. Because mm -hmm. women, right, yeah. women understand Duh. birth pains better than anybody else. <laughs> and I believe that the Lord is going to use women in this hour in a mighty way like that. Because our whole earth is groaning. And whole earth is in pain mm -hmm. right now. But God is going to use women because they will understand better mm -hmm. what the birth pains are. Yes. And how it works. And and that's why he's calling us in this hour to that place of intimacy mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he wants us. So I'm as I'm speaking to you, ask the Lord. He wants to show you visions. Yes. He wants to show you dreams about these last days. He wants to put a word of prophecy in your mouth. Yes. And he wants to show you things to come because he, he, he wants to use you in this hour. Yes. He wants mm -hmm. to use you. We have a place in the last days in the kingdom of God. Yes. And he's going to use you. So as in these last days, as you are preparing your yourself and you are, um, because there's a feeling all over the world that something is going on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Something is going on. Our world is in upheaval. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we need to quieten ourselves and we are at to say to the Lord, Lord, what are you saying? Exactly. What is my portion? Show me. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. people need us. Yes. So we need to ask the Lord. He has a word. Just like he was. I've always wondered about this scripture. When the Lord was was getting crucified while when he was on that journey and he saw his mother crying mm -hmm. and he said, don't cry for me. Mm -hmm. Don't cry for me, but cry for your children mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. are coming. Yes. Because what is going to come on Jerusalem? Yes. Yeah. You know, he was telling them, cry for your children. So in this hour, as we cry out to God, because we know uh, something is up in the air around yes. the world. It's not about one nation. It's about the world. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the Lord... Look at our homes. Look at our children. Look at what's happening today. Yeah. So we have to rise up. Women need to rise up in their homes. Mm -hmm. And God, and the, get on your knees and ask the Lord. Yes. Ask the Lord and he will show you. Mm -hmm. And he will mm -hmm. show you. So build that place of intimacy. It's needed. The world ha had been stopped these last two years. And yeah. I think so it was a great opportunity for us to prepare mm -hmm. ourselves. Yes. yes. Because this is a preparation for something. Yes. And many people have been brought on their knees. Mm -hmm. And during this time, we have a congresswoman in Washington State. She started this prayer group. And we have been praying. She started this group at noon. And we've been praying because uh, what is happening 
she said only on our knees yes we will find out what the lord is saying that's right so he's calling us it's time mm-hmm. it's time it's time and it's there's time. some there's something about intercession intercession yes that that women get mm-hmm. not that men don't mm-hmm. i mean but most men don't most yeah. men don't have that anointing for intercession that they should have right but women get it because it it's similar to childbirth mm mm-hmm. It's about getting a hold of something and praying until mm-hmm. until something happens. Right. Right. And sometimes sometimes you actually physically have like birth pains mm-hmm. when when you're travailing in mm-hmm. in prayer. It, and it even the word travail, it travail means to give birth. Right. Mm-hmm. So travailing intercessory prayer and, and sister Gwen Shaw our our founder wrote a book about it called pour out your heart mm-hmm. travailing intercessory prayer is life changing it it can change your family it can change your mm-hmm. it can change circumstances it can change right. whole whole nations right yeah, yeah. because mm-hmm. because we engage with heaven yes. right yeah. to do what needs to be done in the earth we we need heaven's help we do mm-hmm. and we do. and women who are connected men too i'm not mm-hmm. i'm not excluding men please hear my heart but people who are connecting with our father or connecting mm-hmm. intimately with Jesus as our bridegroom mm-hmm. i mean women understand the the idea of bride and bridegroom right and and it's a little harder for men to get that and and it's a little harder for women to get the idea that we're sons of god mm-hmm. okay so, yeah. but right. but we are all that right yeah. and I, I honestly i think that that's one of the reasons why we have uh all of this issue with homosexuality because mm-hmm. um because we're in a season where women are supposed to be rising up as sons of god and men are oh, supposed to be right. getting it that they're the bride mm-hmm. it's it's a twisting it's a perversion of yes. what god is doing the devil's trying to take people down and while god is trying to get people up mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but that's just a sidebar <laughs> <laughs> well you know there's a great need for prayer mm-hmm. because the very foundation of what god calls family has been shaken Yes. And many yeah. of God's people are confused. Right. If God's people are confused was what family means, what a family structure is, what a male and female is, then we are in if we are confused, then woe is us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why we mm-hmm. in this hour have to rise up. Yes. And travail for right. our families. Right. Because all of our families are attacked. Right. And you know The Bible also talks about I love this verse also in the Bible where the uh, the verse says that if we do not know how to pray because there are mm-hmm. many people who are getting weary they're saying we are been praying for a long time mm-hmm. and they're discouraged because things are not changing they're saying yes. it's getting worse worse yes. but i'm here to tell you to encourage you stand because the word of god says if you do not know how to pray the holy spirit will pray with for you with you with groanings mm-hmm. yes with groanings yeah. so we need to let the holy spirit groan through us yes groan through us in this hour even when we don't know how to pray mm-hmm. even we don't have words yes. but if we have a heart and we say yeah. lord i want to pray yes. get on our knees and say Holy Spirit help me mm-hmm. ground through me yes. ground through we got to persevere yes. just yeah. like we persevere in childbirth right. there comes a time we said we say we can't do this anymore we can't do this mm-hmm. and the nurses and the doctors like no you can do it you yeah. can do it a little bit more push <laughs> you little, can do this. little bit see more we push, are in yeah. that hour right now yes yes mm-hmm. yes we uh, got to push exactly and it's romans 8:26 that you're referring to right and i encourage people especially if they if they haven't received when they're receiving the holy spirit if they haven't yet gotten the 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 gift of tongues or the 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 freedom in speaking in tongues they can still groan yes they let can let the holy spirit groan mm. through you yes. and as you let him groan i suspect very strongly that that if you'll just yield your 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 mouth and your tongue to mm-hmm. him if you've already got the groaning going through right. then mm-hmm. then that sound can be turned into into right. a language right uh, just yield your the rest of you if you if you can get that groaning going that's a great way to get the rest the rest of way right. the way through to your tongues right but but you're absolutely right and and this is this is like a, a part of the childbirth mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. we're in this season and i i remember 
hearing Dr. Percy Collet, who uh, had a tremendous visitation to heaven many years ago. He's yeah. gone home to, to be with the Lord now. But he came back and talked about what he saw in heaven. And one of the things that stunned me was what he said about at the throne, the majority of the people that he saw there were women and children. Wow. So why is that? Well, because there isn't there a scripture in Psalms that, that talks about um, Psalms, I think so, 68, 11, that company of women. He's yes. raising a company of women. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm reminded of Miriam's uh, story also because um, there came a time the Miriam went into the tents and brought all the women and children around. And uh, she had the tamarinds and everything, and they went and worshipped God. Mm -hmm. And she brought them out and reminded them, yeah. reminded that one of the things that I've uh, seen in the Bible over and over in the L Old Testament that the Lord said to his people that tell your children the stories, mm -hmm. the goodness of the Lord, how he set yes. you free, how you brought you out. And that's what we was she was doing. She brought the women out and they praised and they worship and they sing before the Lord and they thank the Lord mm -hmm. for uh, bringing that out of Egypt, crossing yes. the, the, the yeah. Red Sea. Right. And, you know, and so I dance believe, on the Red Sea shore. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly, dance on yeah. the Red Sea shore, and and God is calling us to this place of remembering the goodness of the Lord, what mm -hmm. He has done in my life. I look back sometimes. How can I not praise Him? Exactly. Yeah. How can I not thank oh, wow. Him and worship yeah. Yeah. Him? Uh -huh. You know, and it's just it's just was amazing. So God is calling. Let's let's rise up. Let's stand. Let's stand. You know, yes. even though when it's difficult, and we see all around us. You know, the family structure is getting attacked so badly. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing I also think is that there is such an attack against our children. Yes. And yeah. it got me thinking uh, about the scriptures, looking at the Bible. You know, when there was something that special was about to be birthed, mm -hmm. revelation of God in the world. Yes. Remember yeah. what? Remember what happened? The enemy came. Mm -hmm. And he tried to kill the children. Yes. Yeah. Look at Moses' time. Exactly. Yeah. Look at Jesus' time. Exactly. There was yeah. slaughter of children. Right. Yeah. So because what is God trying, getting ready to do now? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I am, uh, I've been thinking about that and meditating about that. There is such an attack on our children right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm like, something. God is up to something. Yes, he is. And we need to have ears to hear. Mm -hmm. we got to attune ourselves mm -hmm. to God and be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, what is going on? Why there is such an attack on our children? Mm -hmm. What is about to happen? Right. There, is, there got to be. There yes. got to be. So call, God is calling women. He's going to, I believe he's been showing me, uh, there's going to be a greater understanding of women of God rising up and working together, mm -hmm. together as a family, family of God, with men, hand in hand, side by side. Yes. And there will be no, uh, I, I believe there's going to be a greater understanding how to work side by side. Greater revelation is coming that we will not be threatened by each other's gifts. Amen. But we will work together. There's going to be a greater understanding of it and i'm i'm really um praying in that area to see and i am so excited because i get to go and encourage women Amen. all over the world yeah, it's and wonderful. all over the world yeah. it's wonderful to rise up you know you were telling us before we got started about a meeting that you uh spoke in a women's conference uh -huh. in southern india in chennai mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about what happened when when you were given the instruction just to don't don't hold back till it all because you're you're coming as an Asian woman to uh -huh. to the United States mm -hmm. and you know there's people all over the world are going to hear this podcast okay so there's going to be people that will relate to you mm -hmm. as as you are as as an Asian woman who's come through this this uh, cultural situation Western people maybe don't understand that so much mm -hmm. but I, I think there are things that that you released there that really set the people free and mm -hmm. and I'd like you to share just a little bit of that okay so what the Holy Spirit leads you okay 
So I was invited to speak at this conference, and it was called Medians Conference. And basically what it meant was um, anointing of uh, Miriam and Deborah and Anna. Mm. And um, Miriam was a prophetess. She was a leader with Aaron and her brother Moses uh, and children uh, for children of Israel. And she was a worshiper. So we were told the theme was that God is raising, raising up intercessors in these hours, worshipers in, the, in these hours. And Deborah was a prophetess. Mm-hmm. And she was also a judge mm-hmm. that God is raising up women all over that is going to be used like Deborah. And God, Anna, she was a, also a prayer warrior, a prophetess. And she spent all her, of her life in the temple and, uh, and uh, worship and prayer. So, so uh, because where I come from and culturally the way women were treated, even in the church, and uh, that they had no place in ministry. Mm-hmm. They weren't going to be prophetess, so they they weren't going to be pastors, teachers, evangelists, and all this fivefold ministry. I never wanted all that. I just loved God, and I wanted God to use me. So we were persecuted in that area, and um, so when we went to India, and God had set me free from so many things, and one of the things was uh, religious spirit mm-hmm. and tradition. So what this is what I found out going around the world, that people give their hearts to the Lord in different ethnic groups and cultures and all that. But there are some traditions and beliefs mm-hmm. that are not necessarily God or of God. They bring it into cultural traditions and mm-hmm. religious things into the church. Right. And then they use that to abuse each other, to mm-hmm. put down each other. And one of the things that I had seen in my culture was the way they treated women. Mm-hmm. After they became Christians, they all came to church. Still, there was no love. Mm-hmm. There was no respect. And you were put down because you, God can't speak to you. You can't have a vision. You are dirty. You are a woman. Mm-hmm. God can speak through things like that. And another thing was the skin color was mm-hmm. a huge deal in my culture growing up. So if you had a darker, darker skin, you were looked down on, you were made fun of, you were bullied, and you were told that you were not pretty. Mm. But if a girl had a lighter skin, that was considered pretty, and they, she was treated different, and she will get married off first mm. because that's who they will pick. Guys will pick a lighter skin woman. Mm -hmm. Because she was considered pretty. So I always felt unworthy. Mm -hmm. I thought I was too dark. And then we were given all these things to put on your skin. So all these things. (laughs) And then when we go to, uh, we were, I was invited and I was told by the leader of this conference that share everything, share all the things that God set you free from. And also concerning abortion, Mm -hmm. that Indian people are known in culturally, it's a big thing that they want to have sons first. Mm -hmm. And whenever uh, there is a couple who gets married, let's say if they did not have a son and only a daughter, the wife will be talked against, looked down on, and abused. Mm. Sometimes put away even. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And if she kept on getting pregnant with a girl, she will be forced to abort. Mm. And they will be just um, looked down on and talked about and abused in the family. So when I went over there, I was told share everything because, uh, you know, I had gone through a situation in my family. Well, I wasn't, uh, my mom had already had 10 children. And then um, she was pregnant with me and she didn't want to have any more baby. But she didn't know if she was going to have a girl or boy. So uh, they were going to abort me. They didn't want to have another baby. But then they tried twice with the doctor and they tried at home and they couldn't. But God had a, uh, had a reason for me to be born because yeah. he wanted me. So mm-hmm. when I was in India, I was told by this leader, please share about abortion. Because there are a lot of women in the church today in India. Where they will, when they get pregnant, they will find out if they are having a boy or girl. And if they are having a girl, they will abort the baby. Mm-hmm. So when I was over there, I started sharing about that. And uh, it's a big thing in Asian cultures. Yeah. It's a big oh, thing in yeah. Asia. It's in African it just, cultures too. Yeah, it just breaks my heart. So I was over there and I started sharing these things. I started sharing about the skin color, 
that you know God has made us all in his image Beautiful. and we all have a intrinsic value yes. every human being he's made us in his image he has a plan and a purpose you know your color please don't do that because i believe that's a tactic of the enemy mm -hmm. to keep us our emotions mm -hmm. our focus on these things that keeps us away from god right our yeah. attention away from god our emotions that should be towards god in prayer and fasting and meditating on him and doing and fulfilling our destiny but enemy uses these things to keep us away from god mm -hmm. and so i said sharing about the skin color thing that how beautiful you are god made you mm -hmm. what are telling god that you uh, you didn't make me good enough you know mm. it's right? just like yeah. i you know and then i started talking about the abortion situation in asian cultures and and the lord led me to lead all the women these women there were 3000 women to uh let's get on our knees and ask for forgiveness we need to repent mm -hmm. we need need to repent for killing our daughters mm -hmm. and we got on our knees and we prayed and women were crying all over the place wow they were crying all because it's a huge thing in indian culture mm. and um and then i find out in my studies that uh you know scientifically Man's seed is what determines mm -hmm. if you are going to have a boy or a girl. It's true. Mm. But women in Asian cultures are abused for generations. Mm -hmm. Looked down on, put away, even to some places they are killed because they cannot bear a son. Right. And, and it's the man's yeah. fault. Oh yeah, if we really <laughs> want to say whose fault is it? Technically, you know, who's, so things like that and I started sharing and we wept before the Lord. I was able to lead them in prayer and we wept and we asked for forgiveness. After we were done, I started getting these emails and women started writing to me and telling me, thank you. Yes. They said, nobody has ever taught us that. Mm -hmm. and, and they started saying we were so focused. Once we got married, one woman wrote me, she said, once we got married, I prayed day and night that God, please give me a son. Please give me a son. I do not want to have a daughter. Mm. Why? Because she knew how she will be treated, mm. how she will be looked at and talked about and abused. Wow. And so she said, I am so sorry. It didn't even enter my mind to have a daughter. Mm. And email, I mean, emails like that. And they said, thank you. We repent. We mm. realize the value of women. We realize that God has given us life for a purpose and destiny. How many destinies we have aborted? Mm. Wow, yeah. How many destinies? Yeah. Just mm -hmm. think about it. If, if Mother of Jesus was aborted, mm -hmm. if Deborah was, if Esther was, if Lydia was, mm -hmm. you know. And there was, a, I believe there was a shift. And then another young lady came up to me and she said to me, she said, thank you. She said, as you were speaking about the skin color, she said, I was in the corner, hunched over crying because I did not feel beautiful. I felt like I was too dark. Nobody wanted me. Mm. I wasn't pretty. And here is a girl who is raised in a church. Mm. Who is saying those things to her? Who is making her feel like that? Mm -hmm. Her own, her own family probably. Yeah. Because that happened to me. Yeah. Own church people. Yeah, your sister was lighter colored? Yeah, she was lighter colored. Yeah. So she got married really early, mm -hmm. and she got picked really early when she was 16. Wow. Yeah, and she was the pretty one because she was lighter skin, and I was a darker skin. So I just had this unworthiness, this, you know, that I wasn't worthy. Because mm -hmm. when all your life you are told, mm -hmm. you know, you had to work extra, you had to be top of everything if you're going to get anybody's attention. You had to be best at everything and work hard. And then on top of your skin color is going to be a hindrance. Mm. Wow. That's your skin color mm. is going to be a hindrance. Wow. Instead of encouraging and telling that God made you, mm -hmm. he will provide for you. He has a destiny for you. Life is going to go well for you because you believe in Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
and he provides for us. He makes a way for us. And, you know, he has good plans for us. Instead of telling us all the all that, we were told something else. So tell us how you got healed of that. So <laughs> I love this story. <laughs> so when I came to America, right, so all my life I was told I was not pretty enough. My skin was so dark. I was abused because of that. And I was abused by the people, the Christian, the Pentecostal people. My family were Pentecostals. Mercy. We went to a Pentecostal church. And your own, uh, you know, do that to you. I don't know how. But it's, again, it is a religious spirit. It is a traditional belief that keeps us in bondage. We need to break that. Amen. Mm -hmm. And um, so I come to America and my best friend, you know, uh, Tammy is her name. She lays in the sun for hours because she wants to have a darker skin. Right. <laughs> and here I am. I'm looking at her. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you laying in the sun? It's so hot. Your skin is red. She said, well, I'm trying to have suntan. Why? Because I want a little darker skin. Why? Well, I don't know. Well, it's more it, beautiful. It's more beautiful, right? <laughs> and and I started scratching my head. We are like, I'm like, what? That concept never entered in my mind. In my country, you know, everybody wants to be white. Mm -hmm. And I come to a country, you know, there's a lot of white people everywhere, and they want to be dark. They yeah. lay in the sun for hours. They go to a s turning booth to the uh, risk of getting a skin cancer. Mm. And she will come over to me and she will rub her hand on my skin. And she will say, Rashma, give me some of that color. <laughs> and actually, when she started doing that, she started doing that. It healed me. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Wow, it's amazing. Yeah. It healed me. And I said to myself, wow, I am beautiful. Mm -hmm. Somebody else, my, my skin color and all mm. the people around me. They just made a huge deal about my skin and how beautiful it was. And they all wanted it. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> wow. Yeah. It, 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 it never ceases to amaze me how people tend to dislike what God gave them. Right. And they always want to change it. Yes, they do. Uh, and, and I, you know, I, I remember growing up thinking uh, or watching, watching advertisements for, for hair coloring. Right. And and for okay, so you've got straight hair and you want curly hair. Right. So you get a you get a, a temporary permanent. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's not permanent, really. Right. It's yeah. only temporary. And and they you know you get all these curls and and after a while you got to do it again. Right. And, and all the people with with curly hair they want to straighten it. Right. And <laughs> and people with blue eyes or green eyes maybe they want to have brown eyes so they get contact lenses that uh -huh. are colored so they can have mm -hmm. a different color eyes. What is wrong with us that we are we just listening to the devil lying to us that there's something wrong with us and we've got to change something? Right. And, and I think all of that, that has led to now, now we feel like, oh, well, I didn't want to be a girl. I better be a boy. I bet, right. you know, let's, let's, let's change this surgically. Right. When you, you cannot change your DNA. Your DNA mm -hmm. is in every single cell of your body. Right. Your DNA says whether you're female or male. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can mutilate your body. Right. But it doesn't change the fact that your DNA no. says you're male or female. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard that from 100 years from now, let's say somebody dug up our bones. Mm -hmm. Do you know? That they will be able to tell by your bones, looking at your bones, if you were a man or a woman. It's true. It's, it's just amazing. I believe with all of my heart, the Lord showed me that the enemy uses these little tactics mm -hmm. to keep our attention, right. our focus, mm -hmm. majority of our thinking life, our mm -hmm. imagination mm -hmm. that should be dedicated to God. Yes. Used for prayer, for fasting, for meditating of, on God and uh, fulfilling our destiny in God. He uses these things to keep our attention away from God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And keeps on twisting and turning mm -hmm. things. Perverting. Uh, perverting it. Yeah. Perverting it. So our focus, majority of our focus is how we look, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. we dress, what mm -hmm. we eat, you know, our hair, our skin and and all these things. But God is going to ta change that. Let's believe that God is changing that. Yes. yes. That we Amen. are going to get smart and realize what the enemy is doing to us. Yes. So give us some pointers, some keys for 
changing our thinking. Because really, really all of this has to do with worldly thinking. We've been right. programmed by Program. the world yeah, and programmed by culture and programmed mm-hmm. by our upbringing and programmed by things that have, that have been twisted or that have been perverted. Give us some scriptural keys mm-hmm. for how to change our minds. I believe we need to start with very beginning. Mm-hmm. When God said, let us make man in our own image. There you go. Think on that and meditate on that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He said, let us make man in our own image. It is such a high honor. And he, we all have intrinsic value mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in him. Once we understand the revelation of that, mm-hmm. and I think so it will start changing our mindset. We are made in God's image. Yes. Mm-hmm. In the image of God, made he him, male yeah. and female, female, made he them. In the exactly. image of God, male yeah. and female. Right. So yeah. male, male is in his image and female is in his image. Exactly. And then the enemy comes and starts deceiving Adam and Eve. Mm-hmm. Did God really say that? Mm-hmm. Did really God say that? That question, some time ago, I was pondering of what we have been talking about. Maybe I'm not a boy. Maybe I'm not a girl. And the culture, the reasoning of the world is bringing confusion Mm -hmm. to people and our children. And I got to thinking about it. And I'm like, it's the same question Mm -hmm. in a different millennia in our day. Yeah. Did God really make Ah, male and female? There you go. Did God really say not to eat and you will know Mm -hmm. good and evil? Did God really say that? Mm-hmm. He's doing the same thing today in our in this time. Yeah. Did God really made fem- male and female? Yeah. He's bringing confusion. Mm-hmm. And I believe that we need to rise up, rise up, and take His word for what it says, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. the very found there is no more truth in this world. You know, there used to be in the Western world and many parts of the world. You know, like this nation was built with godly principles Mm -hmm. for fathers. And then we became too smart. We don't need God anymore. We took Uh, God uh out of everything. Mm -hmm. Science is our God now. It's the foundation. But you know what's happening now, I noticed? Even science is not the foundation anymore. Mm. And you know what? Language is being attacked also now. Yes. Twisted and, and, and turned around. Mm-hmm. So God is not our foundation, they say. We are too smart. Science is not our foundation. Even language, then what is? There is no absolute truth left. That's what they are taught out there, mm-hmm. outside of churches, I believe. In many churches too. Yeah, in the in churches. They're t- universities, some. in colleges and stuff. So we, but the Bible says, know the truth, mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. truth will set you free. Yeah. Yes. So it's time. There is a great famine of the truth of the word of God in this world, I believe. And mm-hmm. oh, in, in the churches too. We need to get back to the basic fundamental truths of the word of God. Yes. What yes. God says about family. What God says about what is a man and a woman. What God says about you, who you are. Mm-hmm. You know, he said that he made us in his image. And he said that you are the apple of my eye. Yes. You know, he he said, you are worthy. Mm-hmm. So we need to go back to the basics, I believe, in so many things and really spend time in the Word of God. There, I have been told that many people, many Christians don't read the Word of God anymore. Sure. They just go on YouTube or Google it. Wow. We yeah. got to read the Word. Yeah. We got to read it and study it, what God has to say about concerning all these things that are getting confused now. Yes. Go back to the Word of God. If yes. you know the truth, the truth will, if you're searching for truth, look for it in the scriptures. That's what I believe with all of my heart. Yes. 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 And, and yeah. asking the Holy Spirit, Spirit who inspired it in the first right. place to give you revelation yes. as you read. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because the Bible says he will lead you and guide you in all truth. That's true. If you don't read the word, you don't ask the Holy Spirit, you don't acknowledge him anymore, how can he lead you and guide you? Exactly. He yeah. can't. He can't. Yeah. He can't. You have to. One thing, do you, you know, the way I was raised and all the things that I went through, 
But when I got my Bible, mm-hmm. when I got the mm-hmm. Bible, when I opened the Bible and started reading it with my own two eyes, mm-hmm. everything changed. Yes. Because of the Word of God, I am where I am. Mm. Though yes. I was oppressed, though I was abused, though I was told that as a woman you don't have a you don't really have voice mm-hmm. and God cannot speak to you. All these things and because of women sin came into the world. That's what we were told. That was taught from the pulpit mm. where I grew up. Wow. But when I started reading the word of God and saw it with my own eyes, yes. the written word, what God said about me, things started changing. Yes, Things started changing. I'm like, wait a minute. That's not what God said. Mm-hmm. This is what he said, his word said. And when people will speak and I will say, that's not what the Lord said about me. This mm-hmm. is what he said. It changed everything. Yes. And even though I was told as a woman that I did not have much voice and I was shut down, so we weren't allowed to speak. But according to the word of God, you can have that heart to heart relationship. Yes. Mm -hmm. In the most, uh, let's say you are in a situation and it is violent and you are told you are not to speak, but you can pray Mm -hmm. to God in Mm -hmm. your heart. Yes. Mind to mind, heart to heart. Yes. And that makes the biggest difference. Yes. You know, because our thoughts is speaks louder in heaven. Yes. Mm, We don't look at Peter Mm -hmm. when he was told by the religious leaders in book of Acts. Right. That you are not allowed to use the name of Jesus. You cannot speak that name. Mm -hmm. They went into the room and they got on their knees and they said, God, give us more boldness. Yes. Yeah. Give mm-hmm. us more boldness. And the room was shaken. Yeah, right. They yes. felt it. And they went out. He didn't even have to say, but who he was, mm-hmm. what he believed, oozed out of him yes. and mm-hmm. touched people and s- changed lives. And yes. people were set free. Yes. So I it's believe I, as we are speaking about women today around the world, as you are listening, I understand. I am so sorry today. The things may have been done to you. Maybe you are in a violent situation mm-hmm. right now. Maybe you are in a home where there's domestic violence. There's all kinds of abuse and you don't have a voice. But I want you to know you do have a voice. Yes. You don't have to open your mouth. Mm-hmm. In your heart, you can pray so hard. You can pray so loud. Yes. And you, situations will change for you. Yes. Middle of a situation close your eyes if something is happening to you that is not good speak to the lord and speak and use the name of jesus and take authority in the name of jesus over that situation in your heart without speaking out loud in your mind your father is listening in heaven and he will change the situation i have seen it happen in my own life amen Amen. Amen. you have a voice you Beautiful. have a voice and it speaks louder in heaven. I just want to encourage you with that. Amen. Yes. Amen. Nobody can shut you down. That's mm-hmm. right. Amen. And that, you know, that reminds me of that that scripture that is so misquoted and so misunderstood about women should keep silence in the church. Right. That was all about women who were gossiping in the yeah. church and mm-hmm. making noise so the people right. couldn't hear because right. they didn't have they didn't have microphones and PA right. systems right. and and, and the, the women weren't paying attention that's what right. that was about right so you know we have a voice we have a voice we have a voice and god mm-hmm. wants to use it and god yep. wants to use you yep so listener listen mm-hmm. to the voice of the lord you listen to and the become a, a a repeater Mm-hmm. Of the voice of the Lord, and, mm-hmm. you know, make sure what you're saying agrees with the Word of God. That's right. that's what what uh, Reshma is saying about get to know the Word of God. It's there for you to help you. Hallelujah! Would you just pray for our listeners before we? Yes, go? I would love to. Father, we come before you. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this moment, Lord, that you brought us together, that we can glorify your name. We can speak, Lord God, your word. And Lord, we thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for the breakthrough in my life. Thank you for the uh, breakthrough in Sister Sharon's life. Lord God, thank you for breakthrough that you brought in Brother Philip's life. And Lord God, as 
you open the airwaves for us to share your word today, Lord God, with all those who are listening. Father God, we pray. Lord, I pray as we have been talking about women today. And Lord, your destiny for women, Lord, you created us for a plan and a purpose. And the very reason, Lord God, that we have life today, we are breathing because you have a destiny for each and every life. So, Lord, I pray for each and every woman and man and child that is listening out there today. Lord God, to this podcast, Lord, I stir up the gift of God that is within them. And I call them forth, Lord, that they will fulfill their destinies, Father God. And Lord, I speak to the women. I say to them from all over the world, arise, arise. The hour has come for you to rise up and take your place and fulfill your destiny. And I pray that the Lord will touch your heart and your mind and the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you in all truth. And Lord, I pray for those who are in difficult situations yes. today. They may be in an abusive relationship. Lord God, maybe Lord God, Right now, Lord God, they are struggling with the situation of life, situations of life. Lord God, maybe they, Lord, those who have been abused, Lord God, and, and have all this baggage, Lord God, mm-hmm. from their past. And it is so difficult to move on. Father God, I pray. I pray that they, you will bring a breakthrough, Lord God. Yes. I pray for a breakthrough in their lives in Jesus' name. That your word, the truth of your word will pierce their hearts, Lord. And Father, I pray that you will keep them and protect them. And Father, I pray that they will rise up, Lord. I pray that the weariness will go, unworthiness will go, unforgiveness doubt and unbelief lord god i pray that you will heal their physical bodies i pray that you will heal lord god their spirits also that there will be a boost lord god rejuvenated lord god refresh lord god i pray that you will raise them up in this hour i call them forth that they will rise up rise up lord hear the word hear the word the truth of your word lord that they will run to you father i thank you i thank you lord god and we join together with all the women from around the world lord god that they will hear your voice and they will join this great army of intercessors lord god worshipers prophetess lord god i pray lord god that they will rise up in this hour and fulfill their destiny in you, Lord. And I thank you for this breakthrough. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Reshma. It's wonderful to have had you with us. And we just bless you and Dr. Bruce with all the things that God has that you're doing. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. God bless you guys. Bless you. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. Your review helps the podcasting platform suggest this podcast to other listeners who are also looking for a great move of the Holy Spirit. Check out our website at globaloutpouring.org to find out more information, read our blogs, connect with us, and donate. You can also browse our web store for life-changing anointed books. Until next time, This is Sharon Buss. And I'm Philip Buss. God bless you with his overwhelming, loving presence.